Omfei is an ingredient specialist and I would suggest that you wait until we find out what ingredients it farms before you start investing in your next ingredient specialist. Welcome back to another Pokemon Sleep video, it's Bro Vinny here. Now I'm still not sure how to pronounce this name, so I just looked up a random video on YouTube and this is how they pronounce Comfy or Comfey. Apparently, Comfey. It's Comfey. In today's video, we are doing part two of the info and preparation for the Flower Festival because we now have more information than we did before. We know a little bit more about Comfey. The only thing, the most important thing that we don't know about Comfey is what ingredients it farms. Being an ingredient specialist, that is crucial. We also have information about the missions and their rewards. We now know the drowsy power requirements for Comfey. And we're going to cover whether these flower festival bundles are any good. Are they good value to get as opposed to your regular bundles or your good sleep day bundles? Credits to the makers of these infographics. Thanks to Rose Lily, Girls Roxy and Shadow Nut, which has pulled the information from the Rainanex Discord and the data miners. Now, I personally really like infographics, but if you're used to looking at the Rainanex calculator, you can also find the information there. If anything is in red with a huge exclamation mark, it means it's not accurate yet. It's just an assumption. Often with new Pokemon, when we don't know the ingredient list yet, Rainanex would just put a Slowpoke tail there, but it doesn't mean that that Pokemon farms Slowpoke tails as much as we would wish that that were the case. And then you can also find the information on the drowsy power requirement of this Pokemon down here in each of the three areas. So, Comfey, as a lot of you had guessed, it is a healer, but it's not a skill specialist healer. For the first time, a Pokemon with energizing cheer, that means there's a chance to trigger healing on any random member on the team. For the first time, somebody with that skill is not a skill specialist. So unlike Slowking, Leafeon, Comfey has the skill but is an ingredient specialist. Now, I actually quite like this skill because as long as the skill trigger rate is good, this skill on an ingredient specialist is better than Tyranitar with its self-healing skill or like Victory Bell with its self-healing skill. And the reason is Energizing Cheer now has higher chance to trigger on the lowest energy Pokemon. We don't know what that chance is. Uh, once we find out, I'll let you know, but there's a chance for that to happen. Whereas for other self-healing Pokemon like Tyranitar, well, sometimes you're already at very high energy and any extra healing just goes to waste. So energizing cheer is a less wasteful skill than the self-healing skill charge energy. But also energizing cheer has a higher healing amount than charge energy. So what I mean by that is that Charge Energy, which is a self-healing skill, heals at level 1, 12, at level 6, 43. But for Energizing Cheer, at level 1, it heals 14. At level 6, it heals 50. So if we assumed the skill trigger rate were exactly the same, I don't think it would be. I think the developers would balance it by giving Comfey less trigger rate. But let's say they were exactly the same, then Comfey's skill is totally superior to charge energy. And the reason is, well, not only do you get more healing, it will go to your lowest energy Pokemon more likely. However, Comfey isn't extremely quick, which is not a problem as long as its ingredient rate and skill rate are relatively good. Among the single stage Pokemon like Absol or Dedene, it has one of the highest carry limit, 20. It doesn't beat Pokemon that can evolve twice, but it's nice that it has a high bag limit. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem with running Comfey as an ingredient specialist if you're away from the game for a long time. You should know by now that if your carry limit is reached, your Pokemon will only farm berries. And that's a problem for ingredient specialists. So quite often, I like to run ingredient specialists during the day and berry specialists during the night when I'm not available to collect their productions and then have the berry specialist sneaky snack instead of having my ingredient specialist sneaky snack. So just to prove my point, Kangaskhan has an inventory limit of 18. Delibird has 20, but that's a later release compared to other Pokemon. Uh, Absol has 18. After a buff since the game got released, Ditto is on 17. So the only one that Comfey doesn't beat is Pinsir in terms of the carry limit. 
but it's only by a limit of one. And also don't forget that Pinsir relatively has a low carry limit. What I mean by that is it drops apples and we, we, we should know by now that apples drop in huge amounts. We got five apples at level 30 or eight apples at level 60. So even with a 21 carry limit, if it's dropping eight apples at a time, that's gonna reach very quickly. Which again makes Absol the most interesting case of all with a slightly lower carry limit than Pinsir yet drops 12 apples at level 60. It doesn't matter for the people who collect their productions very often. So even for Absol, if you're collecting those 12 apples every 20 minutes, then it doesn't really matter that much. Carry limit affects the people who are away from the game most of the time. And it's actually very similar to saying that Ditto itself actually doesn't need a lot of inventory because it doesn't drop a lot of ingredients. If your Ditto does leak and tails, of course, that's a different story if it drops oil. As for the drowsy power requirement, and for those of you who are new to the game, that what that means is the minimum drowsy power you need to even encounter a Comfey, but just because you meet the requirement doesn't mean you're guaranteed to encounter Comfey. In fact, your drowsy power that you wake up with, it will be used like money in your wallet where you're spending it to get the eight or six or however many spawns that have appeared in that session. So at minimum to encounter Comfey, you need to spend 7.7 .7 million drowsy power from your bank, from your drowsy power to encounter it. If there's six other spawns, that will all get shared from your drowsy power. That is what drowsy power requirement is. So in order to comfortably encounter Comfey, you will need to have enough drowsy power, not only to meet the minimum requirement, that drowsy power will also need to cover for all the other spawns in that session. Now, drowsy power requirement doesn't change per area, so it's same per area, but the tier relating to the drowsy power does change. So in other words, there's a second requirement that you must meet in order to encounter Comfey. Comfey, at minimum, at green grass, you need to be at ultra three, at Cyan beach, you need to be at grade five, and at lakeside, you need to be at grade two. So both the DPR requirement and Snorlax tier requirement need to be met in order for Comfey to even have a chance at spawning. So thankfully, these are not crazy numbers. These are relatively achievable numbers, but I would recommend that no matter where you go, try to achieve Master 1, and that's because here are the mission rewards for this event. The highest requirement for the rewards is Master 1, and you get 30 Comfey candies. Does it matter that much that you miss out on some candies? Probably not, but it's a nice thing to have, and it always feels nice to complete your missions. Everything else is pretty standard. They're giving away five Poke Biscuits, which is nice for this event. A number of ingredient tickets, which will be very useful because we'll be cooking some of our best dishes. It is important that you do spend some time building good dishes, especially at the start of the week because they're getting a 1.5 times multiplier, which is a huge boost from your dishes to your Snorlax strength. Now I won't go through everything here because we've already gone through it, but you can find these, but you can find these infographics in my Discord and also on the Rain and X Discord. I'll leave a link to both in the description below. But don't forget that in order to even encounter Comfey, it has to be one of the three areas that it can naturally spawn. Green grass, Cyan Beach, and Lakeside. And it's no surprise that when I put up a poll on my YouTube to ask people where they were going after watching my last video about which area to pick, it's no surprise that most people picked either Lakeside or Cyan Beach. I think a lot of us are avoiding Green Grass Isle and that's because of the area bonus. And that's because the area bonus there is probably about maximum now. So then it's kind of a waste to go to Green Grass Isle. But if you're new to the game, Green Grass Isle also works. You can catch Comfey there as well. Now, some final tips for you guys before we get into the bundle value. Number one, don't invest in any ingredient specialist just yet. If you are just about to invest in a golem or just about to invest in a larvita, let's wait and see what Comfey is going to give as ingredients first to see whether that will shift the roles other Pokemon will have to cover. I personally am hoping that Comfey will give us milk as the base level zero ingredient because then that would relieve Blastoise from its job of doing milk so that it can do cacao because Absol is so hard to encounter 
and so expensive to catch, who would otherwise be doing cacao. The other ingredient I really want to see is mushroom because I'm stuck with an average Gengar. The Gengar is fine, but it doesn't have mushroom at level 60. So that's just a personal preference. I'm hoping there's another ingredient specialist that can specialize in mushrooms. And by freeing up Gengar to do herbs instead of mushroom, then Dragonite can do some corn as opposed to having to focus on herbs. So you can see that the entire mono ingredient meta starts to shift every time a new ingredient specialist gets released. But it's not as bad as what happens if your ingredient specialists are all mixed ingredients because it becomes a huge mess trying to figure out who does what. The second final tip, which I've covered before, but just to remind everyone, go check your salad preferences. What are the best salad dishes you can cook and start stocking up those ingredients for it to get off on a strong start for the next week. So maybe for the whales, it will be green grass salad. So you want to stock up a lot of corn, a lot of oil, a lot of tomatoes, potato. For those who don't have that pot size, you might be looking at ninja salad, but mushroom and leek, both rare ingredients being farmed very difficult to do so make sure you prepare that ahead of time and a third strategy some people are employing is running multiple expand pot pokemon on sunday you can spend sunday preparing for next week having magnezone flareon glaceon all on the same team at the same time and just constantly getting that expand pot skill but you can't cook if you cook then the expand pot goes away so build it up until Monday morning. That expand pot skill goes up to a maximum of 200. So Monday morning, you get an extra 200 ingredients. Maybe you can dump all of your slowpoke tails or a lot of your stronger ingredients as extra ingredients to get off on a strong start. So for the second part of this video, we're going to cover the flower festival bundles. Uh, you've probably seen this in the news by now. I've done the calculations to see how valuable these bundles are. What I've done is I've copied all of these items and also their numbers over to my Excel spreadsheet that I use to calculate value bundles. In terms of pure value, bundle L is the best this time. When I say value, I'm talking about how much of a discount we are getting. So for example, in the bundle L situation, we're paying 1500 diamonds in order to get 2000 diamonds worth of great biscuits if we compare to how much we have to pay for these in the diamond shop. Friend incense is also a very usable item. Got Comfey incense? Well, look, it depends on whether you feel that Comfey is going to be a good Pokemon. And then there's Comfey candy, which I valued as just any other candy. Works out to be 2,700, and we get about a 45% discount buying it at 1,500. Now, the second best value is the bundle M, but do be careful here. Leaf Stone is worth about 350 diamonds if I convert it from the sleep points equivalent, so which is 1400 sleep points. I won't bore you with the maths, but with the 39% discount, I'm assuming that you really want that Leaf Stone. If that Leaf Stone is worth nothing to you, and just be mindful that you can get one for free from your achievements, and there's only two Pokemon that need Leaf Stone right now. One of them is Victory Bell, and the other one is Leafeon. So if you're not really going to invest in a Leafeon and you've already got a really good Victory Bell you've already invested in, there's no point of buying the bundle. This bundle M is almost meaningless to you. If we take out bundle M's Leaf Stone from the equation, you're barely getting a discount at all. Should you stock one up to prepare for the future in case things change? Look, that's up to you. But in terms of what you read, in, but in terms of what you really need right now, I don't think Leaf Stone is a priority since Leafeon is outclassed by Slowking, who also does Tails and just got a buff. So the only one you really need Leaf Stone for is Victory Bell. Do you plan on using two Victory Bells though? Are you going to have one that does double potatoes and then have one that does triple tomatoes? Well, that's up to you. But I think there's enough ingredient specialists to cover tomatoes that you shouldn't be investing in two Victory Bell. Rather, you should just put all of your candies and resources into one potato victory bell. Now, I think for bundle S, it's one of the worst value that we've had so far. Having said that though, it's the only one that gives you poker biscuits besides bundle M. So if you need the poker biscuits, it's still a bit of a discount as opposed to buying it from the diamond shop. 
Now, how do these bundles compare to the Good Sleep Day bundles? Good Sleep Day bundles give you different types of incenses. So if you don't actually need like a focus incense and I valued it as zero, the bundle L is actually a little better in value than the Good Sleep Day bundles. However, you can make an argument that focus incense can be used to farm dream shards once you've reached the current player rank level cap. So you might see that there's some value in the focus incense. So if we gave it the shop value, then it's the then the discount is a bit higher. Although luck incense is better at getting dream shards. The good thing about focus incense though, is you can use it at the same time as luck incense. So let's say you have a very strong, very high drowsy power session. You're going to get a lot of dream shards. Well, it's actually good to run both these incenses if you've reached the player rank cap so that your research exp actually gets converted to dream shards so ultimately it just depends on what you need which bundle you're going to get but i don't think bundle m is going to suit most people so that's it for today we will probably have to make another video once we figure out what the ingredient list for comfey is and then figure out how that shifts the mono ingredient roles of each pokemon thank you for watching guys don't forget to like and subscribe